Welcome my friends back to Marvel Snap. Today we are looking at self discard and the apocalypse led list especially showing how you can do some creative deck building to be able to pull things together in pool one to get started and then we're going to show how the deck really hits its stride in pool two and in pool three can be supercharged to be one of the true menaces of the end game meta. From the ashes of this old world, Apocalypse will rise and forge a better one. When you discard Apocalypse from your hand, he returns with plus four power. This means on that first discard, he becomes as effective as Hulk, and any discards after that, he just becomes even more powerful, hopefully becoming unstoppable by that final turn six. We are rounding things out, of course, with all the cards that would cause discards. The discard archetype is all about very careful hand management because these cards are quite a effective in terms of energy to power ratio and being able to specifically target the cards that want to be discarded is just tremendous engine efficiency. The way that it bites you is if they hit a card that you didn't want to discard and then you're just short options as you play out your future turns. So we have Blade as the cheapest card to be able to cause a discard, discarding one random card. Lady Sif is married to Apocalypse. She specifically discards the most expensive card in your hand, making sure that she is going to be able to hit that Apocalypse and and bring over that buff onto his side of the board. And then we have Sword Master, just like Blade discarding a random card, 3-6 stat line, very nice to be able to play. While we would like all of our discard effects to land on Apocalypse, that's not always possible, so we're padding things out with Wolverine. If he gets discarded, he actually gets played for free, which can be a very effective and high tempo play. We love seeing Wolverine here. Also, because he cannot be destroyed, we're able to play him to things like Death's Domain or Hala and other locations like this that are causing discard or destruction effects, I should say. And then Wolverine is still going to be able to maintain his presence on the board. To help cultivate our hand, we are running a hybrid with the Zoo Archetype, running a number of just very cheap cards. We have Ant-Man as a king of one-drop efficiencies, Korg with a little bit of control against the opponent, trying to put the rock into their deck and hoping to give them a dead draw at some point during the game, Nightcrawler giving us the flexibility of moving to a location that's potentially locked out, and Nightcrawler also synergizing so beautifully with Angela, playing to Angela's location and then bouncing away so that someone else can fill in and give Angela yet another buff, rounding things out on the more expensive side we of course have Kazar lending the power burst to all of our one drops we have Jess Jones gaining power to be just a very effective drop she's plug and play into any of the decks and we had an open spot so we're running Jess Jones you could take this as a flex spot to what run really any kind of card that you like out of the pool one set and now we actually have America Chavez making an appearance here in the six cost slot because she is guaranteed to appear on the final turn it makes it much more likely that we get apocalypse early in our hand early enough to be able to be targeted by those discard effects into our battle here to see how things play out. At first, I was really not expecting anything out of the pool one self-discard because I thought the deck was reliant on some of the tools you get in pool two to really hit its stride, but we were testing this out on stream and it was going off smooth as butter. It was so much fun to be able to leverage and I think that we filled it out in an excellent way, bringing in the hybrid of the, um, the zoo elements to be able to get things together here. We're gonna go Ant-Man, Nightcrawler. If you guys ever wanna come hang out on the stream, subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified when we go live here on YouTube, it's a great time hanging out with everybody. We do some deck building, we test some other stuff, and it's always a fun time. Let's see, Crimson Cosmos, Mer Island, fantastic for us. Let's drop the Lady Sif, guaranteed to target the Apocalypse here. We'd also be happy if Wolverine gets discarded by one of our other effects, like a, if we can draw into Blade or Sword Master, being able to get him to the board for free will be beautiful. Now, we can put a lot of pressure on Mer Island here, have Nightcrawler absorb a number of the buffs, move Nightcrawler to Crimson Cosmos. We're effectively planning out our entire game here. <laughs> and then we can play the Apocalypse to the Atlantis and hopefully with the plus five and then the fact that he's just gonna be so large overall that he will be able to solo win that lane as well. We'll see if it actually plays out according to how we chalked it up. Ah, the Angela. Well, I don't mind if I do get the Angela here. Now, do we play the Wolverine or do we hold? What are we looking to draw? On turn five, I mean, we've got a number of great options. On turn six, we're guaranteed to see the America Chavez. With the Apocalypse in hand, we're not gonna be able to use the America. We're just happy that she gave us the higher odds of hitting the Apocalypse and our other cards early enough to be able to make use of them. She is the combo enabler extraordinaire. Deceptively powerful card there in America, even though the six nine stat line is not great. 
Opponent playing Jess Jones to Atlantis, probably looking to move the Nightcrawler away to be able to get a little bit more of the uh, the efficiency that they'd like to see there. Oh, hang on. <laughs> if the blade hits the Wolverine and then the Wolverine bounces to... Interesting, interesting. Hang on, hang on. Okay, we stumbled over ourselves here, but I think this is actually better. This guarantees that Blade will hit the Apocalypse, giving him the plus four, and even though we won't get the plus five from Atlantis, having the three strength of the Wolverine and then the plus four on the Apocalypse, at the end of the day is better. <laughs> so here it is, and we'll snap. This one came out exactly the way that we would like to see it. They play a big piece here to Crimson Cosmos, what's it going to be? We're ahead on Mer Island, and we are passing them in terms of generating more buffs per turn. The White Queen- oh no! The White Queen just got our Apocalypse? Ah, uh, it hurts so much. I mean, we have to play the Apocalypse, they're going to match. Most like- but wherever they match, we still win overall. Yes, yes, yes. GG to the opponent. I hope they can appreciate this. We have a stronger presence on board, so they have something creative here, maybe? Do they have a way to be able to win the Crimson Cosmos and Mer Island? That is a tall order, my friend. They snapped, though, for it. Shuffling over. There's the Apocalypse. We got him. Maybe they thought there was some kind of mind game where they were going to surpass us. Still comes out all according to the way we planned. Pool 2 here and the deck is really coming into its own. We have been able to add Morbius with more discard synergies here. Ongoing plus 2 power each time you discarded a card to this game. He has a memory of all the cards discarded, not like the Collector. The Collector has to see cards be added to your hand to gain the buff. Morbius will always be able to get the buff even if you just play him on the final turn. Also, as ongoing, he can be empowered through anything that amplifies the ongoing effects. But we love seeing him here as a very efficient 2-drop. We have also added in Swarm, so we have yet another reliable target, that something that wants to be discarded. When this is discarded from your hand, add two copies that cost zero back to your hand. It is so incredible, it is extremely flexible, and it matches perfectly with Apocalypse. We can still play an enormous Apocalypse Apocalypse on turn 6, and a couple copies of Free Swarm at the exact same time for just a, a much larger burst onto the board, and our deck is way more consistent now with Swarm, Wolverine, and Apocalypse all as targets that want to be discarded. Nothing else in our deck list has changed yet, yet. In Pool 3, the deck is revolutionized with so many extra cards that synergize with the destruction, or sorry, not the destruction, but the self-discard um, connections. We've got our early Ant-Man here playing up against Aw Berry. I'm not sure, is Aw Berry connected to the other YouTube channel? The Drew Berry YouTube channel, or is this just somebody else who loved the name? Unsure. But we are playing on the Super Teddy account. This one is an account that I have bought the Battle Pass on. I've shepherded this account all the way through the beta. Uh, so we're playing up against opponents at infinite rank with access to everything in Pool 3. These guys are going to be psycho. Let's see, what would we like to hit? I think the Lady Sif here? No, but the Lady Sif would be guaranteed at the Sword Master. I would prefer Sword Master and take the 66.666 uh, repeating, of course, option to be able to hit Swarm or Wolverine. And obviously, if it could hit Wolverine and the Wolverine could bounce to the Gamma Lab, that would be the true high roll. <laughs> Cross your fingers. The Swarm, the Swarm is still excellent. We now have two free copies of Swarm for some nice little tempo. X Mansion giving us free cards. Black Widow for them. Gives us the Widow's Bites we will not be able to draw, and we get Typhoid Mary! Typhoid Mary decreasing the power of all of our cards by one, but being a, a 10 strength herself, I don't like it. Not at all, actually. We'll go ahead and play Lady Sif. Oh, Typhoid Mary is so bad. <laughs> I'm not gonna have a way to be able to get rid of it. Uh, no, she is 10 strength herself. Sure, sure. We really just got to find a way to be able to win another lane, and I don't know if it's going to be possible. They hit the Miles of Morales. They play, They paid full price for that Miles as well. That is crazy. We'll end here. We are going to guarantee Chavez coming in, and then we have the two swarms. So even though we didn't hit Apocalypse, this is the exact moment that we love to see. We found the swarm. We're still able to leverage to a great use, our self-discard effects. Be able to get these efficient plays on Swarm. Opponent plays Juggernaut, interesting. Iceman, no! Oh. 
Iceman hurts so much because now I cannot play this because I'm obviously going to play the Chavez. Be able to put this down. Bounce the Nightcrawler. Oh, it's bad, guys. It's really bad. Do I want to lean into the Angela or do I just let this lane go entirely? There's so many points just left on the board, though. Ant-Man can score another three and Angela can score another four. And then if I follow in with the America, I mean, it, it's it's a lot. Bounce up here, play here. I would have loved to be able to fit in something else at the Gamma Lab. I'm not going to snap. I assume that the opponent has a plan here. And the Typhoid Mary is slowing us down a lot. So much. Honestly, the Typhoid Mary is a net neutral at this point, right? No, she's plus one. <laughs> she's lending us one point. And then the Shang-Chi kills her. But wait, the Shang-Chi kills her. And I gain all of the rest of my power back. Did they not see this coming? We take the win? Let's go. Victory. Apocalypse reaches his final form here in Pool 3. This list is farther above the Pool 2 version than the Pool 2 version was above the Pool 1 version. And we have just cut away all of the zoo hybrid elements able to make way for all cards that synergize beautifully with the self discard wants and needs. So we're anchored by the Apocalypse and the Swarm. We've actually even cut Wolverine because Wolverine is not doing enough for us. We have Morbius able to gain incredible power because we have added so many cards that are able to cause discards. We have the Collector here because he's gaining power when cards enter your hand anywhere except your deck. He does grow based on discarding Apocalypse and he goes double based on discarding Swarm. So he is a solid engine piece. You can flex him away if you want, but I still like running him here. Now, this deck is a on reveal synergy deck. On reveal, discard a card from your hand. This is how all of the discard effects work. So we're actually running Beast, and I would love to swap this in for my uh, my beautiful variant with the foil background. There we go. He is able to bounce cards back into hand, which will both buff the collector and then allow me to replay them at one less energy, allowing me to reactivate some of our cheap self discard effects. To round out our self discard cards, we're still running the blade. He is so efficient. Never we're gonna let him go. Colleen Wing is new on reveal. Discard your lowest cost card from your hand. Guaranteed to be able to hit the swarm as long as we are careful with our deck management or our hand management. Gambit, when he discards one of your cards, he will also destroy a card on the opponent's side of the board. Moon Knight, when you discard a card, the opponent discards a card. If their deck is not set up to be discarded, this can be crippling. Lady Sif, still here, still so good with Apocalypse. Dracula, causing a discard at the very end of the game, and then he will gain the power of the card that is discarded. If it is Apocalypse, he will gain the buffed power of Apocalypse, meaning that effectively we have a four-cost way to play Apocalypse, which is so good because then it lets us fill in our other discard cards, and finally Hellcow, one of the strangest Marvel character creations ever, I suppose? Let me know, does anybody know the true origins of Hellcow or why? It was possibly a character that justifies being included in Marvel Snap. Unreveal discard two cards from your hand. Massive, massive power here. In Pool 3 here, this archetype has so many cards that synergize with self-discard. There's actually a lot of different variants, a lot of twists, as it were, that you can put onto the deck. We're going to play Morbius to kill, get some early pressure here. I've seen people drop Beast and play Wong to be able to get the double activations. I've seen people drop the Collector and play Bishop if you're spamming out a lot of Swarm uh, to be able to get the buffs onto the Bishop. That's quite effective. Kamartage. Kamartage is about to make us go psycho, my friends. Ooh, do we play the Gambit? They flip first, so they're going to drop cards, and then we would be able to destroy them. But I would really love to get just guaranteed targeting onto the Swarm here with the Colleen Wing. We're playing off Energy Curve, but we do that a lot. We have to be able to manage our hand very carefully. Swarm pops. Pops again. Buffs on the Morbius. Filling out our hand. Six cards. We still have place to draw, though. We get the Apocalypse. Okay. This is incredible. Let's get these swarms down so they're not choking out our board too much. Now do I want to play the Lady Sif is the question. Lady Sif would double cut the apocalypse, but if I play the Hell Cow, I get four activations. Huh. Interesting questions, interesting, interesting. Let's set it like this. I feel like avoiding the RNG is just the right way to go. Even though leaning into it is more fun, I have to temper myself and make the more competitive play here. 
So the Apocalypse is up to a uh, casual, what is that, 16? Rock Slide giving us a, a couple rocks into the deck. The opponent hoping to give us some duds. We have four rocks in the deck. Most likely, we, yeah, we draw the rock. That is uh, fair as fair. But here, we can drop in the Hell Cow. Let's see. Honestly, I think that we play the rock to Atlantis? Is that crazy? Maybe it is crazy, but it would mean that I'm more likely to get a discard onto a card that's actually effective. All right, we snap. I'm feeling great about this. Now they do have Karmatage themselves. They have got some control elements here. They could hit us with something surprising. We are by no means secure in our victory, but a 20 point apocalypse is as big as the infinite with no play restrictions. 24 strength apocalypse. Ah, oh, and if we had Dracula, then he would be able to get played for only four energy and he would get four power bigger. The, the Morbius is casually at 16 strength. Now, obviously, Kamarchaz supercharged us there, but we run Beast as well, which is another way for us to be able to get double activations on these cards. So while this was a high roll, we are able to get here quite often. Here's the Apocalypse World Ender Pool 3 version of the list. If you guys like the style of the deck where I carry a deck through Pool 1 and then upgrades into 2 and 3, let me know down in the comments. Show some love to the video if you've been enjoying the content. That's what helps us promote it to the rest of the community. The more, the merrier, and I love sharing these deck lists with you guys. Till next time, thank you guys for watching and keep on snapping.